Hey everybody, welcome to Friday Fun. This is Bonnie with Bonnie Bay Crochet and so glad that you could join us. I'm going to just jump right on in and start to say hey to everybody. You guys have been so patient in the live chat here. Angie, good morning to you and Marie and my friend Wanda Gordon, um, Bahama, North Carolina. Again, my friend Marie in South Carolina um, and love to craft. Waving right back at you, my friend and Terry who tells us that um, fall has reached San Diego. Yay. Um, it's overcast and around 65 degrees. You said, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice. Amen to that. <coughs> Excuse me. Actually, I was doing really well with this cough, y'all. It's, it's kind of almost completely gone. So thank you all for praying for that here. It's, it's been a long haul. It just will not let go of me. Let me go ahead and turn that light just a little bit bright there. Um, and let's see. Oh, we have Stacy Richards from Cincinnati, Ohio, my the birthplace of my folks. That's great. And um, Denise um, from Windsor, Ontario. She's help, hoping everyone has a blessed day. How wonderful. Um, we have Phil. Hey, Phil. So glad to have you with us. And Leanne. Um, she says, hi, everyone. Haven't made it to a live in quite a while. Cloudy and cool here in Nova Scotia today. Yeah, we we have enjoyed some amazing, cool weather and um, can't be more grateful. I am fixing to travel again. So that means I'm going to be traveling back into late summer <laughs> for a few days or actually maybe for a couple weeks. I'm going to be making a, a big family circuit, <laughs> so to speak. Um, I'll tell you more about that in a bit. And Phil, so glad to have you with us. Um, he says, I would like to remind you all that the Rhinebeck Sheep and Wolf Festival will be going on October 21st and 22nd. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm surprised it's only two days. Um, at the Dutchess County Fairgrounds in Rhinebeck, New York. He says, I wish I could go, but I won't be around for it. Yeah, I, I have never actually never been to Rhinebeck. Would love to go there at some point. It's just, you know, life gets filled and you make choices. And so, you know, to choose one thing is to not choose a bunch of others. But um, I'm going to hopefully get there one day. Oh, my goodness. I just had a bunch of um, new um messages. Uh, thank you guys for the love you're giving me. That's so sweet. And um, PJ, thank you. She said, hello, everyone. It's my first time um, at one of Bonnie's lives. Super excited. About it. Well, PJ, we are so glad you are here. Um, you, this is a really great group of people. I, and it's not because of me. It's because of who they are. And just people are just really nice here. And we kind of insist upon some of that. But um, people here are just, just really kind and encouraging. And that's basically the goal here. This is a no snark zone. I mean, we can we can take jokes. Don't get me wrong there. But um, yeah, yeah, this is um this is this is a good place as far as we can 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 make it. Um, hey Beth, thank you for uh, welcoming PJ and and Jay Liz uh, and Hannah. So good to see you, girl. I'm gonna get to see you maybe in about a week. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm the can't can't commit yet, but um I'm going to be, let me just go ahead and say, I'm going to be heading. I can't say exactly what I'm going to be doing just yet because I'm not really sure. But um, a friend asked me to come with her to Nashville. So I'm going to do that. Going to be doing something super fun there. Um, I'll just go ahead and say, she she's, she asked me to do some recording with her, with some of my, my um, Native American flutes, whistles, whatever. Not sure what we're going to use yet. But let me tell you, when somebody asks you to come do some recording in Nashville, they don't have to ask me twice on that. So I was like, okay, I will be there. And um, and it's just so happened that I was heading to Georgia anyway. So it's just a little bit further out of the way towards the West. And then I head South um, to see two of the most beautiful little babies in the world. Um, and they just so happened to live in Georgia and just happened to be my grandson. So um, one of them is, I think, like almost six weeks old and the other a month to five weeks already. I mean, time really flies. And then after that, I'm going to be going down to see Hannah in South Carolina. So my husband's going to be meeting me at some point, just not sure when and where, but, um, but we're, you know, just going to be doing the family 
family visiting kind of thing while we can before the holidays kick into full gear. Yeah, the holidays are coming. Um, I know folks like to fuss. <laughs> I guess I, I do too um, about some things. But you know, when you start seeing Christmas trees in September in Michael's store, a lot of people I know are like, ah, what's that all about? That's months away. It's like, yeah, but if you're a crafter, you better get on the stick now if you're going to make somebody a gift, a Christmas gift or Hanukkah gift or, you know, whatever. Um, so, so, so yeah, I mean, <laughs> we're going to be making the rounds and then it'll be time to start it up again with Thanksgiving and Christmas and great time of the year. Just very, very busy. Um, I'm really looking forward to that. Well, anyway, um, thank you, Liz, for your happy Friday greetings. and. Um, and let's see, we have Tammy from Oregon and Patty Page. So good morning to you, Patty. And um, Carol from the Northern California. Wow. I know it's cool up there, <laughs> or it should be. Um, and in Rachel from Arizona. Oh, one of my favorite states to visit. Uh, oh, so I, every time I hear of Arizona, I miss my, I miss my late uncle and aunt. But anyway... I digress. Um, Carol from Kentucky. Good morning to you. Or I guess good afternoon. Sorry, guys. <laughs> it is the afternoon. It's a little dark here. It's a little overcast, so it doesn't really look like afternoon sunny. I guess we're into the overcast for, for a time here. And um, Bonnie L., good to have you with us. And Shirley from Georgia. I'm heading your way, Shirley. Uh, I understand you all are still doing late summer down there. Uh, well, comparatively speaking, I know it's gotten cooler than the 90s, but uh, I'm having to pack for two seasons, having to pack long sleeves and having to pack late summer stuff as well so that I don't get too overheated. And um, Jacqueline, so good to have you from an overcast LA. Yeah, it's it's kind of the same here. And, Shat and Shatika... Good morning to you and blessings right back at you. And um, Josie um, says, hi, everyone. I missed you guys last week. Oh, thank you. She says, I love that cable throw behind you. Well, Josie, let me go ahead and tell you about this. Um, it's coming October. Wait a minute. What? Well, hold on a second. Not October. Let me let me get my uh, calendar out here. I am organized. <laughs> Uh, let me see. When do I have this scheduled for release? Okay, I was right. Um, I have this scheduled on my calendar to be released October 30th. Okay, this is the... Uh, give, it's, it's a little big, okay? This is the Celtic braided throw. And it's, uh, it's bigger than I can show show you right here. And the reason is I've listened to you all every time I put out a new throw, I always get comments like, well, how do I make this bigger? How do I make it wider? How do I make it longer? I hope I don't, I, I don't even know that that's, I guess it is possible with this one, but I don't think you're going to want to make it any bigger than it is. I believe it took 23 balls of the um, paint box yarns. Simply Aaron. So if you're looking to make this um, really, and I think in any color, um, if you're looking to make it in a color other than this kind of really neutral brown uh, color, um, definitely stick with the lighter shades if you can. Um, they will show the stitching better than if you go real dark. Um, I know some of the dark, rich colors are gorgeous, but you're, you might lose some of the cabling in them. But anyway, so this is the Celtic braided throw. And let me go ahead and, and I'll tell you more about this. I'm going to go ahead and put it back here. Okay. It's not as neat as it was before, but I'll just put it back there. And I, I, have, I have good news. If you are a watch subscriber, this is now available on the watch channel as well as the complimentary written pattern. So I just, I just want to give my watch subscribers. This is a paid subscriber channel. 
It's $6.95 a month, but whenever I release new designs, the patterns are complementary, especially, well, I, I going forward, everything I do, I am going to do everything in my power to re retain ownership of my work. Um, many years of publication, that was not the case. That was not even possible. So, um, so there are some designs on there that I can't give you the pattern because let's say Penguin Random House or Leisure Arts will own the rights to the pattern. And these are patterns that are on the older side, but everything going forward for the last several years, last few years are there. And I think my best work is yet to come. You know, just, just like any of us, the older we get, I think the better we get at what we do. And so just to let you know, whenever I put things up there, the patterns are complementary. Um, you can download whichever ones you want. And if, if you have trouble finding those, just contact me. You need to scroll down to the extras section and they'll have a little thumbnail just like for the video, but it'll say written pattern and you click on that and it will download to your computer or whatever your device that you're using. Also, this is included. Um, this is still my, my pre-release version. It will, the, the ones that are released now don't have that little do not sell <laughs> stripe. That's just for me. Um, so anyway, um, this is now available on Amazon. I'm still waiting for my copies to come. I think they're going to be coming the day after I leave. So um, kind of bummer <laughs> on that one. Or I'd be able to have some free copies available for giveaways coming soon. But that's going to have to wait till I get back home. But anyway, these are now available. They include seven designs of intermediate level uh, crocheting and um let's see well i'm not going to go through all of them that that might bore you to tears but um and this is the back side with the cable loves so all of these except for this one have already been released and are on my youtube channel the videos are there if you're looking for a a lower cost collection of the written patterns here they are and um I just appreciate your support there. I am going to be having these at the Frederick Fiber Fest. That's October 28th at the Frederick Fairgrounds in Frederick, Maryland. I'm so looking forward to that. So I will be there. I will have these. I'll you know, be available to sign them if you want. Um, and I'll have many of my other uh, types of books there as well. So I'm looking forward to that. That's October 28th. And that's going to be from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. I will be there all of that time. Let's see what else am I, was I supposed to say about that. Okay. But anyway, so the throw is coming to the YouTube public channel, but that will be October 30th. If the if you wanted to purchase the pattern, the pattern is, did I have it in my Lovecraft store? It may not be in my Lovecraft store yet. No, it's not there yet. I'll be putting it in my Lovecraft store as we get closer. Probably be more like just a couple days before the 30th, just so that I know it's going to be there and, and available by the time um, this is released. So let me look at my little, let me grab my cheat sheet. It's a little, hold on a second. Mm. It's too far away for me to, to read. Um, oh, also coming soon to the Watch channel. I am going to be starting Zoom Hangouts with the subscribers or whoever would want to join me. I know not everybody's going to have time for that, but I know a percentage of you will. So um, I haven't sent anything out on that yet. I'm still working on getting that done. Um, but once I do, I think it's going to be, I think I'm going to just kind of do a hit or miss on the times and the date instead of having it absolutely scheduled, because that way I think it'll be um, maybe easier for some of the international folks to join me uh, some of the time, because we have people from literally all over the world um, who are subscribers to that, and, and as well as here. And I, I so appreciate you all being here. Um, so I think I'm going to just kind of mix it up and I may even try doing some of that while I'm away on the road, depending on the strength of the internet, um, where I, where I am. So, so anyway, um, okay. So Hannah's asking me, hold, hold on a second. Let me, let me go ahead and 
shrink this screen down a bit. Um, Josie wanted to know when the book is coming out again. The book is available now. And there should be a link in the video description below. I believe I put one there. But the book is available now on Amazon. It's available as a booklet or as a PDF. And it is available worldwide where Amazon does business. So, I mean, you, it, these are all printed on demand. So they're actually printed, I believe, in the country where they are shipped from. Like all of the ones that I do for the U.S. are actually they're they're printed not too far from here. I've gotten copies printed in Delaware and some in South Carolina, some in North Carolina. So these are giving, you know, local people from wherever you live work, which is, which is really kind of cool. Uh, so yeah, Amazon does do some things right. And I, I know there's a lot of folks who will fuss about Amazon, but uh, I'm not one of them. <laughs> I am a big customer um, and I am thankful for them in so many ways. Um, but anyway, uh, what else do I have? Oh, yeah. If you haven't signed up for my newsletter yet, <clears throat> excuse me, it is free. And I have a lot of these updates that I talk about kind of written out. And I, I try to put some extra photos and different things in there as well. I am trying to be better about sending that out on more of a weekly basis. But just to let you know, you might see it appearing more often, maybe every week. But I promise you. <laughs> It will not be one of these things that you sign up for and you just can't get off the schedule and, and you get 15 emails a day. That's not the way I rock and roll at all. Uh, I'm just a one person. I am not, I am not a marketing guru here and I don't intend to be. Um, I just want to let those who, who like what I do, just get the word out and you do have to ask for this. So if you go to my website, bonniebaycrochet.com. Um, it will be the first thing you see on my homepage. And if you scroll down, you can put your information in and sign up for the newsletter and you'll be automatically added to my list when it goes out each week. All right. I have a question from Liz, J. Liz. Um, says, Bonnie, I want to make a scarf to match the colored cable blanket. What would be my stitch count? Oh, okay. The colored. Okay. Okay. That's the, um, the colorful cables throw the one that has like, like 15 different stitches. I believe that it's a big count. I, I believe the base count, it, this is not including the turning chains for, with whatever stitch you start with, but I believe it's 24. That's the least common denominator of those stitches. So that's a big, um, least common is that right? No, no. Least common multiple. Yeah. Least common multiple. So what I would recommend that you do with that, Liz, is you may have to, like some of the stitches, you may just have to um, decide on that row how many you want. And if, if, if the stitch count is not what you want, you can always just have fewer of that particular design and then just use single crochets on each side kind of make a match if you can, um, so that you can still work those stitches, if you know what I'm saying. So um, it's a multiple of 24, but, you know, maybe you don't want a, uh, you know, a scarf that's 48 stitches wide. You want one maybe 36. You can try 36, but um, you just may have to work with the stitches. Uh, it's not going to work out perfectly, but you can make it work. If you, if you see what I mean, just kind of split the difference and put those extra stitches on each side of the scarf. That's what we designers do because it's not a perfect world and, you know, not everything flows in multiples of 24. <laughs> so um, if that makes sense, uh, but that's a great question. Um, oh, another thing, if you haven't subscribed to the Bonnie Bay Crochet YouTube channel, again, that's free. If you can go ahead and hit that subscribe button, I still am getting this stat about 60% of those who view the channel are not even subscribers, which I, I, I get that. I know people don't want their, their feeds to fill up with stuff that they're not going to look at. I, I totally get that. But if you don't want to miss anything, you know, consider subscribing. Um, and let's go ahead and get back to, to saying, Hey, um, 
Oh, okay. So Lynn has a question. Okay, let me go ahead and grab this. Okay, so you're asking about about what Christie's wearing. She's actually wearing a wrap, which is a you know a long stole. And um, Lynn asked uh, on the poncho Christie is wearing on this book. Um, what yarn did I use? In what color did I use? That's a good question. Let me see if I can find the answer in here. Um, because I use that for a couple of things. Let me see here. I should know my stuff better, but <clears throat> it's kind of a, a velour, kind of a, a yarn, if, if I'm making sense. Uh, okay, come on, where is it? Okay, this is actually the Easy Cozy Lacy Stole and Scarf, and this is a better picture. It's actually a scarf. Well, it, it's a stole. It spreads out wide enough to be a nice wrap. Or you can wear it as a large scarf. And the yarn that I use is Premier Yarns Parfait. It's 100% polyester, uh, 574 yards in, in the big ball of that. Um it's a number five bulky weight yarn, but honestly, um, yeah, I guess it's about a number five. I used a size K hook, but those yarns are, they're not as thick as, as they look because they squish down quite a bit. Um, yeah, but there's another, another look at that. And this is in the beginning book. So if you're looking maybe for a Christmas gift or Hanukkah gift or just, Somebody wants to learn how to crochet. This is the hard bound. It also, it also comes in a soft bound on Amazon. And there are a bunch of pro, uh, a bunch of projects in here. And I kept the information for beginners very basic because I, I, I don't, when someone's learning to crochet for the first time, the last thing they're going to want to do is to look through a book that's encyclopedic with information. It's very easy to get overwhelmed with information, if you understand what I mean. So I really scaled this back. I made this easy, but I didn't dumb it down um, to, to where you don't have enough information. Not at all. I, I believe that everything you need to know is in here to to get you from beginning even through to intermediate crochet because then the projects do start off very easy and then they gradually you add a skill here and there. So anyway, so that is available also on Amazon. And, um, but thanks for asking about that, Lynn. Um, oh, okay. No, no problem, Hannah. Thank you. Thank you for, so I don't know if that may, I'm sorry, Lynn, that may have been more information than you were asking, but, but the other book that I was talking about just now, that's, that's also on Amazon right now. So just to let you all know, um, let's see, I am way behind here on comments. Uh, oh, BJ. So glad she says first time here and I'm so glad to be here. Have a great day and week. Well, thank you so much for, for being with us here. And, um, and Beth says they are, Nice and overcast there in the Cleveland, Ohio area. Yeah. Um, and I just lost my place. Got a ton of comments. Let me let me scoot this thing over a little bit so I can read it better. Okay. Lots and lots of comments. Um, all right. Um, oh, we have Ola Joe, the crocheting sailor. Welcome, welcome. That's, haven't seen, seen you in, in a while. Uh, or I just not remembering well. And Diana, she says, I finished up four of your crochet items. Well, wow, didn't get to any of them. <laughs> wow. Um, and Wanda, thank you for welcoming all the new folks. And um, yeah, and, and Josie, you too. And Michelle, good morning to you um, from Chile, Helena, Montana. It frosted last night. Ooh, boy, I'm not sure I'm ready for that yet. But um, I hope your girl, your daughter and son, a, a grandson are, are doing well. 
I'm thinking about you every time I see your name on on my prayer list, my friend. And um, <laughs> Bonnie L says, love that. No snark. You know what I mean, right? Yeah, you guys are good. You know what I'm talking about. This is a, this is an encouraging time. I mean, you know, we go out into the world or to other websites and people slam us. You know, we don't don't need that. Don't need that. Life is too short to to waste time with that. Um, thanks for asking about Hannah, Josie, and Denise. Thanks for the reminder about the thumbs up. That just helps this broadcast to go a little bit further with all those algorithmic bots in the background. And stuff I don't really understand as well as I probably should. Um, yeah, thank you. And um, so let me, Hannah's sending me another. Oh, okay. And so Lynn was wondering what kind of yarn that I used for the throw, for the Celtic braided throw. I just used the paint box Simply Aaron yarn. If you don't have, if you're not interested in that, that's, I order that online from Lovecrafts um, because I found that that's, they're not paying me to say this, by the way, but uh, I, I purchased it from them because I, I could get comp yarn, but it's just, it's a lot of trouble <laughs> to go through all that. So I just, I just order that whenever it's on sale. Um, it, it's, and that way I don't have to have accountability with them on release dates or anything. I like to kind of be a free agent here. But um, I, I just like their yarn. I don't run into a lot of knots. It works well. It it seems to be beautiful. I had really good success with it. I've been through hundreds now balls of that yarn, and I like it. Um, if you want to use whatever is available in your area, that's totally fine. It's just acrylic yarn. It's just worsted weight acrylic, and most of all worsted weight acrylic comes from Turkey anyway. It's probably coming out of the same factory. Who knows? But um. But, but anyway, um, and, and also with Lovecrafts, they have sales a lot. And oftentimes I can get free shipping. I don't order it unless I order enough to get free shipping. And when they have a deep discount on their sales, this is the time of the year where these sales really start to hit. Um, and also I like ordering from them because I can get all these 23 or however many I need in the same dye lot. I don't have to go hunting on shelves and... Uh, climbing over things at Michael's or Joanne's, trying to find that one elusive box of yarn where all the numbers match. And you know what I'm talking about. If you've ever gone from store to store to store, like I have, trying to find anybody that has 20 balls of yarn that match, they, it's it's really hard to do. So I've just um, gone the easy route and just order online. All right. So, um, Yarning for a smile. Oh, what a cool name. Um, wants to know what has been your favorite books you've put out and why? Huh, that's a great question. Um honestly, that that's a really that's a really good question. It really depends on the subject. Um, but okay, I I, I can answer this. Um Okay, probably my one of my favorites is is Aaron Afghan's Two Crochet. Now, these two books that I'm going to show you don't have complete video tutorials. There, there, there is one like one video tutorial I was allowed to make for this book recently, the uh, Winter White Throw, and I have made several in this other book that I'm going to show. But I think this is my probably one of my favorites because it's like a miracle book to me. This is the first time I ever got anything accepted for publications. And it was through Leisure Arts. And I signed the contract with them in 2009. So that was like, you know, miraculous. There are five throws in here. And um, this went out of print for a while. I begged them to bring it back after three years of me pestering the heck out of these people at Leisure Arts. Somebody listened to me. And I said, you need to let me make a video of one of these because uh, they were they were hesitant. They didn't want me to do anything online with this. So I asked them, do you want to sell leaflets? Let me put one on YouTube and let's you know, bring this out again. If if you're not going to bring it out, sell me the rights. And they didn't want to do that. They're not going to sell you the rights back because they own this. They own the rights to this. So um, they let me make a video. And after they did that, you, a lot of folks purchased this. 
to, to you know to have the uh, pattern because this is the only way you can get the pattern is through the leaflet and it's back in print and it's doing extremely well so thank you for that um the other of my favorite books was would probably be this one contemporary celtic crochet again this was published um 2012 i believe i signed the contract i believe it went to print 2013 this is actually the copy i signed for my mom um but it has has many many um of my first uh really inspired projects and they were a lot of a lot of um a lot of inspiration came from ireland and in 2012 i was able to travel with my husband on a business trip to Ireland. And he surprised me and took me to the Aran Isles because he knew that's the inspiration of a lot of the, the things I like to do. So um, when I went to the publisher at the time, it was F and W media, which later became interweave, which later went under, but then later penguin random house picked up the one of my, my two books um, with the craft books, this is way too much information, I guess, than what you asked. But, um, but yeah, this was just my favorite. Um, I, I felt like the editing, working with my editor was really, really good. Um, I really enjoyed the projects. They are genuinely inspired by Ireland and particularly the Aran Isles. And that's the first place that I ever saw a sweater wrap. And I'm like, I've got to crochet some of those because they're just amazing. Uh, so anyway, so that's the long answer. Those are my, I guess, all time favorites, but you never know. I mean, I, I um, was thinking last night I was sitting, I have to show you something here. I was working with some of this yarn, this beautiful, beautiful um, Greenwood fiber companies yarn. Uh, I met these folks, this wonderful lady who owns this company last year when I was out um, in Loveland. Colorado for a conference and I just love her yarn. And so she offered to send me this color because I, I wanted to make a sweater out of this and that's all I'll say about it. But I was cabling with this last night and, and actually came up with a new style of cable that I'm going to be using in this design. And, you know, just the whole the whole process of creating something different that comes out actually works um, is just so much fun to me. And um, of course, once you get the idea and you flesh it out, and then there's a lot of administrative kind of work and photography and other types of work that I also enjoy that it comes with that um, and the filming and all of that, but just the absolute creative raw process. I just love. So so all that to say, it's, you know, the, these are my first two books. So I guess that's why they are so special to me. But I have enjoyed everything I've done since then as well. Cable Crochet Made Easy. I really enjoyed doing that one because that's the first time I got to put videos with the publication. And so going forward now, I try to make that a standard part. So I think the books coming out now are, offer more quality as far as, um, having the videos and everything, the teaching instruction right there. But I, I think the, the quality of the designs in this book, um, I, I just, I think they're pretty good. I really, really enjoyed making that book and really enjoyed working with um, my editor, Noelle, at the time. I hope she's doing well. Okay. Um, yeah. J Liz wants to know, see what's in the catalog. I guess see what's in the books. Um, well, there, there's a mix of things in here. Um, I'll, I'll see if I have time to, to show you. Well, should we just flip through real quick? Okay. My book does start out with a complete stitch guide, step by step, even though there are no videos. Because again, this was before, this was in publication process before YouTube or, you know, the world that we know online was even a thing. Um, it has a nice a stole, Liffy and a Jiffy. There are a couple of these. Um, this is a backpack or it could be made into a purse like she's holding there, depending on how you finish the top and their instructions for both. It's using the basket weave. 
Um, there's an easy infinity scarf and headband to match. That uses the um, woven stitch. And this is a blanket made using the um, braided stitch. Um, there is a cardigan sweater that can also be made into a vest. Um, oh, this is one of my favorite. I do have a tutorial. I do have a tutorial for Liffy and a Jiffy that I showed you. And I do have a tutorial for this. It's um, a blanket, highly a honey baby blanket. It uses a lot of Celtic weave and braided cabling. Um, cables meets lace. It's really hard to see, but you can see on the other side. It's kind of hard to wait. Where they photograph that, it, it's probably not translate here. This gives you a better feel for the stitching. Um, here's another uh, care, Celtic carry-all. It can be made into either a backpack or a purse with handles. And I do have a video on my YouTube channel for the Gaithersburg Stole. And of course, it's named after the town where I live now. And here's the Inishir sweater wrap. This is also the same one that's on the front cover. It's just that when they photographed it, they... They folded over <laughs> the collar part so that all you see is the back side. Yeah, here's a, a better view. So that's why people say, oh, I can't find this one in here. It's because they used a different model for whatever reason. I don't I don't ask questions anymore. <laughs> Publishers think differently than designers. And there's another baby blanket with sailboats made of popcorn on that. And another sweater wrap. And a sweater wrap is, is a long stole, and then it has a back that goes in the middle of the stole that covers your back. So it feels like you're wearing a sweater, but it's really a wrap. And some little crocheted bags for your technology, your tablet. And you can see how, how old this is, really, because this is a, I don't know if you can even recognize this, this is a, an iPod. One, one of those little things that we used to carry around that would, you know, hold our music only. That was before the, the cell phones were designed. And here's another version of that. I know I'm going a little bit long, but. And here's one of my favorite. Um, the Aaron Diamonds cardigan sweater or vest. So there's a lot in here. I mean, I, I have over at least two and a half, two years or more of work that went into this and another sweater wrap. And again, lots of photo and another one. Again, this has a back piece. Let's see if there's a photo. Oh. Okay, here's a here's a photo and well a, a drawing of what I mean by a sweater wrap. You have a long stole portion and you see the pockets here. And then the back section, you, you add an additional piece onto the back. You crochet this on. And so so what happens is you you're not just warm about your shoulders, but you're not gonna freeze in the back too, because that's oftentimes that's the disadvantage of wearing. Um, wraps is you're still a little chilly, but that kind of helps to take that added chill away. And again, one of my favorite, the baby feet, baby blanket. This is also on my YouTube channel. It's definitely a little tricky crocheting those, but I, I love the little, the little toes and the feet on these. And there is <laughs> the famous Famous Afghan photograph with the wrong side showing. Uh, <laughs> um, that's not my favorite part of the book, but but you can see you can see from this section that there there's a lot of texture, a lot of nice texture in that one. Okay, and is that it? Yep. So so anyway, that took a little while, but that's that's what's in here. And again, at least three, 
maybe four projects uh, that are in this book are on my public YouTube channel. So I hope that's helpful. Um, Terry Red Redmond would like to know if the top and dress you made is in the new book. No, the, um, the new, the new leaflet is just, is just throws. It's just six throws, crocheted throws with lots of cabling. Um, that's, I'm sorry, seven. There are seven intermediate designs. Yeah. That are all throws. So that's all that's in there. Um, uh, and Marlena says, have a great time while in Nashville. Thank you so much. Um, and, oh, and Diana says, I love to meet you. Nashville is 15 minutes away. Yeah, actually we're, we're not staying in Nashville proper. There's another town. I forget the name of it. Uh, but it's not too far. It's, it's just, it's kind of between Nashville and Franklin. Um, it's where my friend has the hotel room. So I'll be getting a room there. Um, yeah. So Diana, yeah, I, and honestly, I don't know, you know, I would say, yeah, let's, you know, you can always reach out to me, Bonnie, um, Bonnie Bay at me.com in email. And um, I can just see if we even have time to make a connection there. Um, her, my friend who's doing the recording, it's her, her music. Um, she's the priority here. So I will need to see, you know, what kind of a schedule we're going to have. But um, yeah, let me know. I would love to to know if there are any you know yarn stores in the area. If I get some downtime, I, I may have some downtime. Um, I want to say Sunday, but I'll be visiting a, a different. I'm going to be visiting a sister church in Franklin on Sunday morning. Um, but maybe I, I'm not sure what Sunday afternoon is going to be like. I don't know how much rest I'm going to need from the a 10 and a half hour drive, which may turn into a 12 hour drive. You just never know with traffic, um, you know, from Saturday. So, oh no, <laughs> uh, Terry Archer, Nace, you don't need to buy a copy. Call me, just send, tell me, tell me you need a copy of that. She says she's bought her third copy of the beginning crochet book. She lost her other two. Oh boy, what are we going to do? <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, oh, Marlena, thank you. She says, have a great time while in Nashville, my town. Yeah. Um, it's going to be a kind of a work trip, but I, yeah, I'm going to be looking around, see what we can find. I know a lot of my favorite uh, recording artists um, live near there. I know uh, Wayne Watson, uh, Stephen Curtis Chapman, probably a bunch of others I know live in the area where I'm going to be. Um, let's see. Oh, and Carol G says, I bought the wandering cable poncho pattern and I can't wait to order the materials so I can get started. Oh, thank you, Carol. Um, I hope if you need help, um, with, with the yarn, if, cause I know the alpaca is, is on the pricier side for sure. It's definitely a luxury item, but, um, it, you can easily substitute your favorite worsted weight, um, yarn that you use, usually use. Um, you're probably not going to get the same kind of drape that you will with alpaca, but, um, but you might be okay. You might be fine. Um, oh yeah. Um, so Jeannie, the Proverbs 31 lady says, um, now that I have two new babies, new grandbabies in the family, maybe we can do some baby patterns. We are talking about it. Definitely, definitely it's in the thought process right now. I do have a lot of baby blankets. I've always loved making baby blankets and giving them away to everybody when they have a baby. Been doing that for years. But yeah, I need to I need to look at that. Um I've been talking with my daughter Becky, who also has dabbled in some crochet design over the years with me. Um and my daughter-in-law. Christy, she also is a big time crocheter. So I'm hoping the plan right now is to, you know, as they get to get used to being a mommy and, and taking care of a baby is we're trying to figure out, well, what are the things that you can't live without? What are the things as a new mom that you really want, that you will wear? 
um, that you will actually put on the baby and not just put them on, take a picture, and then you never see it again. Um, I remember I made a baby sweater, hat and booties for my daughter, for my first baby. And I think I had it on her once and that was it. I mean, it just, it just was so impractical. So, and that's not to say that you can't make things that are impractical. I'm not saying that, but what I want to do is have something, we want to make a booklet that will be something that will get used and things that will be enjoyable. So, so we are thinking on it. So thank you, Jeannie, for that prompt. I, we are thinking in that direction for sure. Um, Hannah, you're doing a great job, honey. She's sending me a lot of your questions. So Marlena, yeah, I'm hoping to have a good time in your town. And um, Phil says Hobby Lobby had Christmas stuff out in July. Oh boy. Um, yeah, you know, there's a big uh, focus that might be a little on the early side, but there's this big Christmas in July that a lot of marketers do. And I, I may have put something out there in July. I think I started advertising my, um, the white Christmas tree. Um, what do you call it? Christmas tree skirt, the Aaron Bonnie's Aaron Christmas tree skirt. It's the white one. I need to probably put that out and, Otherwise, it just gets lost in the 900 and some odd videos just on my channel. So I need to bring some attention to that because that was one of my, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot more intricate than the braided cable one that I came out with recently. But the red braided, um, braided cable tree skirt, I will say comes together, dare I say, easily and quickly. So, so Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yarning for a smile um, suggest sleeper sacks. Hannah just sent that to me. Yes, yes, definitely. Sleeper sacks are at the top of our list, actually. I think that's one thing that we didn't... I might have had um, a version of that. I think I had nightgowns for the baby that had a drawstring at the bottom, which was really great because um, you didn't have to worry about threading their legs, which are always kicking around, uh, threading their legs into pants. They kept, kept them warm and tight and it was very easy for diaper changes and stuff. So yeah, the sleeper sacks are definitely on the list. Um, and she also recommends some yarn shops in Nashville. Okay. House of yarn, Camellia fiber company. Okay. I'll definitely, um, I'm definitely going to look into that. I don't know if I'm going to have time to visit any. And, and and the Lord knows I don't need any yarn right now. But, you know, it's like if I'm going to be there once, I might as well take a stab at seeing, you know, what's around. Uh, make make some friends. Who knows? Um, um Hmm, that's a good idea, Hannah. Have sleeper sacks lined with linen or cotton. Yeah, that actually might be good. Um, that's probably a good idea. Uh, also to keep their toes and things from sticking through the holes. Not that that's a problem, but some people may find a, that to be an issue. Um, Diana says, I have made three baby blankets for Christmas already. You go, girl. Ooh, that's great. And Kathy from Alabama. Wow. We're going to be close to Alabama, not too far from uh, the Alabama line. Um, when I head down to Southwest Georgia and um, Beth says, it's almost too late to start making gifts for this year's holidays. It can be. Um, I, I know from watching my channel, I've learned from you guys from watching the stats that, and this is, this is what, so how, how the thinking is behind the scenes. I know that if I'm going to release something that's one of my favorites I've been working on forever, I'm not going to release it in December. You know why? Because you guys are busy. You're out baking and, I don't know, working and um, trying to make gifts for people. You don't have time for, for something that's going to take, you know, 50 hours to complete. Uh, I get that. I totally get that because I watch very little YouTube during, during December, because I'm very busy travel, preparing for travel, preparing gifts and, you know, all the good stuff, preparing maybe for programs at church. Um, if you, if you have, you know, Hanukkah preparation, I know a lot of, you know, similar things going on there as well. 
Um, plus, you know, whatever else, you know, people are celebrating. And then we have Thanksgiving and lots of cooking. And so I just know that right at Thanksgiving until January 1st, I don't do a whole lot of brand new stuff because I know you guys are busy, but I know as soon as the holidays are over, people are tired. People may have a little extra cash from gifts and the snow comes. So there's not much else to do, but to do YouTube or, you know, things that are indoors. Um, and, and I know viewership just skyrockets at that point. Um, uh, just, just the way people are with the holidays and with this, you know, the changing of the seasons and whatnot. So, um, Okay, and Hannah just sent me another little note here. Marlena also recommends Bliss Yarns in Brentwood, Tennessee. Actually, that's where we're going to be. We're going to be in Brentwood, I believe. I, I'm told that's kind of a kind of the hoity-toity side of town. So, I mean, it probably wouldn't have been the first place that I would have picked, but I think that's near where the recording studios are. So, um, yeah, I've, I'm told that's where a lot of, you know, we were looking at hotels and like, why is this one like so much more than that one? And, you know, it looks, it looks like they're both nice and well, it's in Brentwood. I'm like Brentwood. Okay. That's apparently where a lot of, um, I guess country music stars have their homes and, and so forth. So, you know, yeah. So it's going to be interesting. Um, going to be taking my, um, Toyota Highlander with about, it's got about a quarter of a million miles on it now. So we just got the fluids replaced in it again. We are keeping that thing alive as much as possible. So I'm going to be the driver this trip. going to be picking people up from the airport. And, um, ah, Phil says that it's where Dolly Pardon lives. Oh, we should stop in and say hi to Dolly. I'm sure she, she, she'd know all about Bonnie Baker. <laughs> I'm so joking guys. Um, yeah, that's cool. So yeah, that's probably why Brentwood's a little bit pricier on the hotel. But yeah, I am definitely going to look and see, see about that. Um, just, I'm just going to look on a Google search and I'm sure Bliss Yarns is probably going to be there because that'll be probably the closest one to where I'm going to be. So thank you, Marlena. Um, and uh, thank you, Lisa. She says, love all your, love your yellow poncho. It's a bit of sunshine on this super rainy day here in Connecticut. Oh, yeah. I just, I just can't get enough of this color. I guess it's um, the closest to yellow that I can wear. I can't do like, you know, lemon color yellows because it makes me look like I need to, I don't know, get a blood transfusion or something at the hospital. It just doesn't bless me. But, um, but yeah, I would, yeah, I, I love yellow was, was one of my favorite colors as a kid. I just couldn't wear it. So I, I can kind of pull off the browns. So I, I really enjoy those, especially this time of year. Um, and Terry Redmond says family is very important. Praying that cough disappears in Jesus name. Thank you, Terry. It's gotten a lot better just in this past week. I mean, the, the constricting of the, uh, I, I was all, almost having like asthmatic. Um, and I'm, I don't have asthma, uh, at least I haven't, but, um, yeah, I, whatever this RSV bug was that I picked up, it's been like almost two months ago. It's, it's gone for the most part, but every so often the, the cough hurts or the, I can feel the, uh, you know, kind of like a little bit of an asthma constriction, constriction in the, the windpipe. So I, I haven't felt that really this past week. So I'm thankful for that. And you guys with asthma. Oh my goodness. I don't know how you do it. I've been a flute player most of my life. So I'm, I'm used to doing a lot of air and breathing and I, I don't even dare try. I mean, I'm going to be playing some other instruments when I'm in Nashville, but um, the flute's a lot more demanding and I, I'm not going to be able to pick that one up. Um, probably not without hacking, but um, I'll be glad when I can pick it up and do some playing on that again. And Lynn, so good to see you in the chat. Thank you for your encouragement. And um, yeah, and, uh, and BJ says, should have said she's a Wisconsin gal. Absolutely. Wow. That's great, BJ. I have never been to Wisconsin. I would like to go there someday. I just not been able to get up there. I'm going to have to check that off my list. Maybe hit the road. Um, and thank you for encouraging Hannah Lynn. I so appreciate that. And Marie says, how are, how are you? I am doing so much better than I deserve. Thank you for asking Maria. Um, it's just something that our, 
one of my old pastors uh, taught us to say, and I, it's just so true. We just have so much to be thankful for. I mean, I'm just so thankful that we don't get what we deserve, or at least I'm glad I don't get what I deserve. I get so much better than that. So God is so good. Um, and Linda Jones says, hello, it's Linda from Portland, Maine, waiting on my yarn for the Abigail blanket. Oh, I hope you enjoy that one, Linda. I enjoyed, I enjoyed doing that one. I should do that one again with some other colors. I'm just always thinking of the next thing and, and so excited to, to make something new. Um, and Phil says he's doing fine. Like most places around the country today, it's rainy and overcast here too. Oh boy. Um, Oh, thank you, Anna. She said that was a cozy looking throw. I guess that's been several minutes ago, but I'm finally now just getting to your comment. And thank you for your comment about it too, Phil. I bet it looks so cozy to snuggle under a cold winter day. Yeah, and it, it's got some weight to it as well, as you can imagine. Um, it'll it'll keep you in place. <laughs> um, and thank you, Michelle and, and BJ and Denise. Oh, thank you, Lynn. She likes it too. I'm so glad. And we have Jessica from Northeast Ohio. Brisk day, but perfect time to make a hooded poncho. Ooh, I have not made a hooded poncho, but I hope you enjoy that. And we have Norma uh, from Mesquite, Texas. Oh, Norma, it was such a joy to meet you. I, If you're the right Norma <laughs> that was in the class, I think we are. You are. I, I still need to get to that pattern. I, I'm going to take a look at it maybe when I'm at the hotel and I'll try to get back with you on that. I've just not had the time since I've been here. I was hoping to do some housework, but oh well, guess I'll have to get that next time. <laughs> um, and Sandra, so good to see you in the chat. Yes, I hope you're having a good Friday. I'm hoping we can get together when I head down to, to Georgia. I'm heading down on the 4th, so I'm hoping to maybe be able to get with you at some point. Um, no, no pressure either way. Um, yeah. Okay. And Josie, yeah, the book is already out. Um, oh, thank you, D.L. Crisp. I appreciate your kind words there. Um, oh, thank you, Wendy, um, from the, uh, the yarn shop in Hagerstown. Yes, they have a new location. I'd like to get there. I just Need to wait till I get back later in October. So Hagerstown Fiber Fest is next Saturday, October 7th. Yeah, I, I would go, except I'm going to be gone. Um, so yeah, October 7th in Hagerstown, Maryland. For those of you who are in the area, there is a Fiber Fest. So check it out. I've never been to that one. I would like to just to see what it's like. Um, but yeah, if you guys are in the area, check that out and make sure you, um, stop by the yarn shop in Hagerstown and, and uh, see their new location. Um, and Archer Nace says, finally able to watch with everyone. Hi, Hannah and Bonnie working on Bonnie's ripple for my soon to come grand nephew, Freddie. Oh, how exciting. Um, yarning for a smile wants to know if I'll be doing a book signing in Georgia or a class. Nope. Nope. This is just, this is just family travel. My, uh, the only thing I have for the rest of the year is the Frederick fiber fest in Frederick, Maryland, October 28th from nine to four. I'll be there at a stand. I can sign books. I can sell books and I'll have some samples of my work from past design. Some of these were samples that were from the books, things that have not been worn, obviously, except by the models for the photography. So I will have a lot of those available on a rack as well. Um, so yeah, October 28th. And that's the last thing that I have scheduled um, for this season. I do have something coming in May of 2024, but that's for another time, another place. And it's a very small, it's actually a group of knitters. Um, and Hannah, I'll be at the Claggett Center for that. How cool is that? Um, we've, we've had conferences there before. So I'll be doing a crocheting class for knitters. I mean, the knitters 
want to learn how to crochet. And they reached out to me and I'm like, sure. Um, and Amy wants to know, what is the poncho behind you? The white one? This is the Inishman poncho. It's uh, on my YouTube channel. It's also in my Lovecraft store. It's also, again, if you're a watch subscriber, am I trying to hit that too hard today? Probably. <laughs> if you're a watch.bonniebaycrochet.com channel subscriber, it's already on the channel and the pattern is complimentary for my subscribers there. And just another plug for that. Uh, if you sign up for the year, you get, a, it's a discount at $69.50 for the year. And um, there are no commercials. There are no, there's no spam. Nobody is going to come pester you. There's no pop-ups, none of that junk. <laughs> I don't like that kind of stuff. I, I hate it when I go to certain sites and I, I feel like I'm having to clear the page just continually just to be able to see just what I went there to see in the first place. So because I don't like it, I don't, we don't work that way. Um, in fact, our website, if you ever go to our website, I do have the option to monetize. We may look at that in the future, but right now we don't do that. Um, so if you go to my page, it's just a clean page, the information you went there to get. You're not going to be pestered. You're not going to be hounded. No one's, and on the watch channel anyway, no one's going to keep track of what you're doing there like they do on all the other sites, even this one. But um, um, that's beyond my control. But, but, you, I digress. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, so that's another reason why we wanted to do that. And there are many designs on that channel that do not appear on the public one here. So we want to make sure that our, our watch subscribers have a good value. I, that's very important to us. All right, Charlene, Lucas, just hello, Bonnie and everyone watching. Do you have a pattern for turtleneck hoodie? Hope you all have a happy and blessed weekend. Oh, how that's so sweet. I don't really have a turtleneck anything now that I think of it. And I really, the only hoodie that I have, excuse me, is a hooded, a hooded scarf with the pockets in the beginning book. And that's, that's the only thing that I can think of that I have with a hood. I, I, I am I need to design something like that. I mean, part of me is I'm not a fan of the hoods because I find that I never wear them, even in the wintertime, hardly. Um, but but I do need to design one. I, I just haven't, haven't done that. Oh, that's a good idea. Um, Lynn Guider says, I should make a wandering cabled hat. Hmm, that's a good idea, actually. I may have to think about that. I've got, yeah, that that's a good idea, Lynn. Thank you. I may have to do that to, uh, to match the, one of the scarves that I have out there. The, uh, the Rahab scarf has kind of the wandering cable look to it. I may have to do that. Um, ah, Archer and Ace, she's making a peach cobbler. Oh, my mother-in-law would absolutely love you, oh, Terry. Um, I am not a big peach fan, but she, oh my goodness. Whenever the peaches come in, in South Carolina, we go to the orchard and we, we bring home more boxes than anybody should ever have in their house. Um, she takes orders from the locals and we go there and she'll bring home, we'll bring home like 15 uh, crates of these things in her car, whatever her car will hold, and then drop them off to people. And, and anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm getting taught. I digress once again, but um, yeah, I hope you enjoy that peach cobbler. Um, we would always have peach cobbler, she, peach pie. She, she would just eat peaches, 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 peaches until they're gone. She, she just loves those things. And Carol says peach is her favorite. Yeah, I, I like I like cobbler, but my favorite is blueberry. Um, we can get a lot of fresh blueberries down there too. And blueberries is my husband's favorite. So I learned to make blueberry cobbler for my husband using basically the same kind of thing that you do for peach cobbler, I think, but you know, just lots of sugar. It's, it's amazing flour, all kinds of goodies that you put together. Um, so Phil says, speaking of books, I found a new app to keep track of all the crochet books. I own 91 so far, LOL. Oh my goodness. But I can scan a barcode and add it in called my library. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. I've got, I don't even know how many books I have. I'd have to count. I don't, I don't really, you might have more than me, Phil. 
because I have a lot of knitting books as well, because I am, I am really inspired by the knitting books. And a lot of what I do is I'll look at the knitting books because my, my mo motto is why should knitters get all the good stuff? And we crocheters have to just do the same old, same one that we've been doing since 1972. So, um, so I, I like to look at knitting books and think, how can I do this with a crochet hook, with the crochet stitches? And that's how a lot of my stitches have been developed is just looking at them and saying, we can do that. But then it takes a lot of playing and a lot of ripping just to figure out how can we get this to look like I want it to look. And, and again, that's how that's how I roll. And that's how I got some new stitches coming probably in January probably in January because I'm, again, I'm working on this gorgeous sweater and I don't think red is just for the holidays. I like, I think red is just a great color to have in your wardrobe, uh, no matter who you are. And I think it's something great to have a pop of red in your living room too, because it's, it, I don't know, it's just a theory. There's a theory I have. Oh, Hannah, thank you for getting Amy that link. I so appreciate that. But that's a great idea, Phil. Man, that's that's a lot of books. You go, 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 go. And, and you do know, I, you probably know this already. You can get some great old crochet books. I mean, I'm talking from the 1940s and before um, at thrift stores. And some of the best books I've gotten, uh, the best edgings book that I have has a sticker that it was originally like 10 cents. And um, I think it was published in the early 40s. I think it was before World War II very, uh, my mother-in-law did give that one to me and it's, it's a keeper. And I'm, I got to be real careful not to wear it out because it's my one go-to book because there's really nothing new under the sun in some ways when it comes to those crochet and edgings. Um, Cause the people who have come before us spent many, 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 many hours and years developing such gorgeous work. So we can just stand on their shoulders and, and benefit from their work. And, um, ah, Cynthia, he says, my baby boy is an Amazon delivery man. God bless him, Cynthia. Um, my son did, uh, he didn't do delivery work. He worked in the warehouse, I think, for <laughs> maybe a week or two. It was it was a lot. It was a lot for him. He he, he opted out of that pretty quickly. But um, yeah, that's, I so appreciate what they do and definitely try to be kind. And actually, when just a few minutes ago, I got a delivery waiting for me outside, something that I ordered for my trip coming up. So, so glad that I was able to get that so quickly. And Mrs. Debbie LW, so wel welcome to you. And um, okay, PJ, thank you. Um, has a question. Will, when will the autograph books become available? Oh, um, the ones that I ship out on my Etsy store, that's a good question. I have just been too busy to add them back in because I have not been in town long enough. And I, the reason I don't have them is because I'm going out of town again. And it's just, if you could see all the books, it, it's just too much to carry. And oftentimes I'll carry everything and then I'll get no orders or I'll carry just a few and then I'll run out. So I just don't want to you know, disappoint in that area. But once I get back into town after October 16th, I'm going to make a note to add them back in. So I'll be able to ship them out. So I definitely want to have them available before the holidays, because I know people may want to give special gifts. And um, if someone's a crafter, I mean, I would love it if someone gave me a crochet or a knit book that I don't have. I mean, not that they would, I'm not sure how they would know what I have and don't have, because I got so many, but I would love a book, you know, from from somebody, uh, you know, if someone in my family got me something like that. So I do offer them October 16th is the day I will, um, well, after the 16th, after October 16th, look, and if you don't see them, please, you all bug me, email me, say, where are the books? <laughs> so I can add them back in. I just don't want to, you know, leave that hanging. And Terry says she needs that app, Phil. Thanks for mentioning that. Um, Ah, and Carol Beck is in Nashville. Yay. Um, and, okay, I think I answered Lynn's question. Uh, and Phil's talking about his um, app and says that it, it scans fast, so adding them goes quickly, okay. 
You can add photos if they don't automatically add. Plus it has publisher, author, and title. So you don't have to buy or double buy the books. That is a great idea. Yeah, thank you for telling us about that, Phil. Well, it is getting late, you all. I just wanted to make sure we get through. I just want to make sure nobody is left out. I think I'm, I may have actually done that for a change this time. And Sandra Q from Indiana. Yes, better late than never. Well, I'm, I'm so late getting to your comments. So thank you for waiting. And well, thank you, Yarn. You're yarning for a smile. I, again, I love that name. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you for the comment on the earrings. Got these at Joann's in the jewelry section. Very inexpensive. So yeah, Joann's. Look at Joann Fabrics. They have a lot of really cool stuff there, or at least in the one I went to. I think it was in Frederick, Maryland a while back. Um, okay. Um, oh, wow. Yarning for a smile. Now I'm jealous. I got to go. Oh, that must have been awful though, right after Diana's passing. I remember that. Um, but he says he got to go to France right after that and saw all the flowers on the interstate. Oh, it makes me want to cry. Hmm. Got to go to Normandy. Oh, I'm definitely going to cry. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Yeah. Breathtaking. So much emotion in the air. Oh my goodness. Yeah. My, um, my daughter's in-laws flew into, and they had this trip to the UK to, to London planned for a long time into parts of England. And wouldn't you know it? Um, they flew in. It was like two days after the queen died. So it was like, it was bittersweet. Everything was closed, but then they did get to, you know, mourn with the people. So it was like, whew, it was quite a, quite a historical trip, but not the one that they had originally planned. Um, and so Marie wants to know where she can purchase the beginners uh, crochet book. These are all on amazon.com. I'm sorry. I forgot to mention that amazon.com has everything that I've, I've published in book form. Um, yeah, definitely Amazon. Uh, I would check into Amazon, Marie. And if you're not in an area where Amazon delivers, let me know. And, um, you know, I can try to help you further on there. Other other outlets also, you might be able to find them on walmart.com uh, and even Barnes & Noble. But they wouldn't be books that are necessarily in the store, but you could order them online uh, from these other book dealers as well. All right. Well, it is getting, it is getting late. Oh, we have artsy gamer girl. Oh goodness. Yes. And, um, wounded healer. I have not seen that name before. Thank you for joining us. Um, thank you for your kind comments there. Yeah. Sometimes she said, I go to sleep with a Bonnie B tutorial. Let me tell you something. I put myself to sleep sometimes. <laughs> I used to edit my own closed captions, but I don't do that anymore because it, it would put me to sleep. So my sister does it. She enjoys that for whatever reason. I don't know, but she's one of my, my, my now contractors. So well, anyway, um, if I missed anybody, I am really, really sorry. Uh, well, um, let me just make sure I'm not missing anything. Okay. Well, let me go ahead. I wanted to read this to you again. I'm, I'm, I'm defaulting to this a lot because this is just what I'm reading from my morning devotions before I read the scriptures. And I just love Mr. Spurgeon. I just, he's probably my favorite 19th century pastor. Um, so, so anyway, I wanted to read you this. I read this um, a day or two ago and it really, it just profoundly affected me. So I hope it affects you as well. Um, Again, it's this is a, a Christian a Christian um, devotional book. So it's from Psalm 138.3, and the title is by Spurgeon, You Answered Me. No proof is so convincing as experience. No one doubts the power of prayer after receiving an answer of peace. It is the distinguishing mark of the true and living God that he hears and answers the pleas of his people. The gods do not hear or answer. Jehovah is the God that hears and answers prayer. 
There was a special day in David's life when he cried more fervently than usual. He was weak, wounded, worried, and weary. Like a child, he cried to his father. It was a bitter, earnest, and eager prayer, as natural and as plaintive as the cry of a baby, and the Lord answered it. Can there be an answer to a cry, to an inarticulate wail of grief? Yes. For our Heavenly Father is able to interpret tears and cries. He replies to their inner sense in a way that fully meets the case. The answer came the day cry ascended. Prayer rises to heaven rapidly and mercy returns to earth quickly. The statement of this verse is one that all believers can make. When it can be substantiated with facts, we should boldly proclaim it for it is to God's glory. Well might David say, I will worship, when he felt bound to say, you answered me. We cannot forsake the Lord, for he has heard our prayers. Ah, I just love that. And I just love where he says, you know, he even understands an inarticulate wail of grief. And just how... You know, praying doesn't have to be this, you know, this masterful oratory. It, oftentimes it's just a whimper and just how God understands that. I just love, love that reminder. And yes, he has answered me so many times. I could write books about it. Um, so anyway, I hope that encourages you guys. It just still blesses me to read and just be reminded, you know, of the faithfulness and something we're not going to get generally on the internet and generally not much, you know, in the, the culture today. So I hope you guys have a wonderful trip. I'm not sure what my schedule is going to be next week. I'm going to do my best to go live the next two weeks, but I don't know where exactly I'm going to be. So I'm going to hold that loosely and just say, please check with the community section or on Facebook, and I'll let you know. Will you guys have a fantastic week? God bless. Bye-bye.